back to the FT Share channel. In the previous videos, we discussed manual transmission sequences and the wet clutch. Now, in this video, we will talk about a component that enhances the function of manual transmissions in two-wheeled vehicles, which is the quick shifter. Quick shifter. This component plays a crucial role in competitions to maximize vehicle performance. This tool allows the rider to shift gears without pressing the clutch lever. By reducing several steps or algorithms in the shifting process, it significantly improves performance, resulting in smoother and more efficient shifting. The idea behind the birth of the quick shifter actually originated from a technique known as clutchless. This technique closely resembles how the quick shifter works, where the rider doesn't need to use the clutch when shifting gears. But before we dive into clutchless, for those who don't understand how the manual transmission mechanism in two-wheeled vehicles works, we'll explain it first. For those who already understand and want to skip this part, you can jump to this minute. Need custom CNC parts fast and at an affordable price? We've got just the solution, JLCCNC your trusted CNC machining partner for makers, engineers, and businesses around the globe. JLCCNC is a CNC machining partner ready to support you from prototyping to mass production. With just a bit of design input, they can precisely bring your design to life, just the way you envision. Of course, JLCCNC offers a super-fast production process. Your custom CNC order can be completed and shipped in just three to five business days. Worried about pricing? From prototypes to mass production, JLCCNC offers competitive rates with no hidden setup fees. Quality? No need to worry. JLCCNC uses advanced 3-axis and 5-axis CNC machines to ensure every detail matches your design perfectly. And of course, everything we've said comes directly from our own experience using JLCCNC. So if you've got an idea or your own project in mind, you should definitely give it a try too. And get $70 off your first custom CNC order. JLC CNC. Fast to deliver, affordable to make, custom built to match. JLC CNC is here for every step of your project. So, the working system of a manual transmission on motorcycles, often referred to as sequential transmission, consists of a set of gears with various ratios. These gear ratios are designed to convert torque and engine speed through the gear lever. For example, to achieve high torque, the input gear must be smaller, while the output gear must be larger. To achieve speed, the input and output gears should be nearly the same size. This type of transmission was first discovered by Panhard at Levasseur in 1890 with a three-speed non-synchronized manual transmission concept known as the sliding mesh. Before the sliding mesh transmission was introduced, vehicles at that time only used a single gear ratio to start and reach their maximum top speed. Naturally, a single gear ratio was highly inefficient because it had to accommodate both starting and reaching the top speed. Because of the lack of gear ratios and shifting, this system wasn't even considered a transmission. Returning to the sliding mesh as the first recognized transmission, this system consisted of multiple pairs of gears, first, second, and third gear, and for four-wheeled vehicles, we would also find a reverse gear as the fourth ratio. However, despite having more gear ratios, the conventional sliding mesh transmission had its drawbacks. It was difficult to shift gears smoothly while the vehicle was in motion. This was due to the lack of synchronization to assist with the shifting process. As a result, when shifting gears forcibly, you would hear a grinding noise between the gears, which could cause wear over time. This is why the sliding mesh system was also called the crash box. Due to these drawbacks, the sliding mesh transmission was further developed into the most commonly used transmission today, the constant mesh manual transmission. Similar to the sliding mesh, constant mesh also has a set of gear ratios, However, the difference is that the gear ratios are already connected to each other without being directly connected to the shaft, allowing each pair of gears to move freely. Specifically, constant mesh transmission is divided into two types, manual transmissions for four-wheeled vehicles 
and sequential manual transmissions for two-wheeled vehicles. While both constant mesh transmissions have slightly different gear shifting mechanisms, the sequential constant mesh transmission doesn't include a reverse gear. For those interested in learning more about manual transmissions in four-wheeled vehicles, you can check out the link to the video in the description below or in the top right corner of this video. Now, let's move on to the working system and the parts of the manual transmission on motorcycles, starting with the parts first. The first part is the input and output shafts. The input shaft is connected to the engine, more specifically to the gear leading to the crankshaft, while the output shaft is connected to the gearbox and then to the vehicle's wheels. The second part is the gears, which consist of five gear ratios, as the sample we're using here is a five-speed manual transmission, with each gear having its own ratio. The ratio for the first gear is 1.275, meaning 2.75 turns. Of the input gear produce one turn of the output gear, aiming for high torque. The ratio for the second gear is 1.1.78. The ratio for the third gear is 1.1.37. The ratio for the fourth gear is called the direct gear ratio with a 1.1 ratio, where one turn of the input gear produces one turn of the output gear. And finally, the fifth gear with a ratio of 1.91, where the input gear is larger compared to the output gear. This is called the overdrive ratio. Unlike the other gears, which are aimed at increasing speed or torque, the primary purpose of the overdrive ratio is not to gain higher speed or torque, but to improve fuel efficiency and engine durability. This allows the engine to maintain a high vehicle speed with a lower engine rotation compared to fourth gear or the direct gear ratio. Next, if we look closely, each gear has a different shape, so we will separate them by color. Here we have three types of gears based on their shape. The first type is the small gear, called the static gear, which is directly connected to the input shaft and cannot shift positions. We will mark this gear in yellow. The next type of gear is the freewheeling gear, which can rotate freely on its axis without being connected to the shaft. We will mark this gear in blue. Lastly, we have the slide gear, which has teeth on the inner circle. This gear functions as a connector between the gear and the shaft, allowing it to rotate with the shaft but still able to slide left and right freely. We'll mark this gear in red. If we look in detail, on the side of the slide gear, there are teeth called dog teeth. Returning to the freewheeling gear, it also has gaps slightly larger than the dog teeth, which allow the dog teeth to engage and lock the two gears, connecting the slide gear and the freewheeling gear. When one of these gears is rotating, in practice, this type of gear system allows for shifting without pressing the clutch lever. However, unlike the quick shifter, shifting gears under these conditions without using the clutch will result in rougher gear changes. Next, we have the shifting forks, which act as levers to engage specific gears. Below that, we find the shifting drum, which has grooves for each shifting fork to control the gear ratios. Lastly, we have the gear shift lever, which operates the shifting drum. All right, those are the parts found in the sequential constant mesh manual transmission, or the manual transmission for motorcycles. Now, let's move on to the working system. As usual, this transmission begins working once the engine is started, and the rotation generated from the engine is transferred to the input shaft in the gearbox. Here, we can see some gears that are not rotating, and the rotation on the output gear does not affect the output shaft. This is the neutral gear position. To start accessing the gear ratios, we need to operate the clutch lever and the gear shift lever to rotate the shifting drum and move the slide gear. For example, to engage first gear, we need to slide the gear at the fifth gear ratio. The gear ratio will then slide and lock the freewheeling gear at first gear, and the rotation will be transferred to the output shaft and to the vehicle's wheels. Meanwhile, the sliding gear at fifth gear will rotate, but won't affect the input shaft. Therefore, we cross out the gear that isn't rotating, and this is the path for first gear. Next, to access second gear, we press the shift lever along with the clutch to rotate the drum and slide the sliding gear. The fifth gear slide will return to its original position, and the sliding gear at fourth gear will move towards second gear and lock its freewheeling gear. The output shaft will rotate, 
and the freewheeling gear at fourth gear will be crossed out because it doesn't affect the input shaft. And this is the path for second gear. Next is third gear, where the sliding gear at fourth gear will shift, releasing second gear and moving towards third gear. Continuing to fourth gear, the sliding gear will return to its original position, and the sliding gear at third gear will move towards fourth gear to lock its freewheeling gear. The rotation will also be transferred to the fifth gear ratio. However, the rotation transferred won't affect the input shaft because the gear on the input shaft can move freely. And this is the path for fourth gear. Finally, fifth gear or the overdrive ratio is accessed by releasing fourth gear and the sliding gear moves to lock the fifth gear ratio. As with the previous gears, fourth gear will rotate but will not affect the input shaft. With all these gear ratios, our vehicle can be used in various terrains and conditions, depending on the torque and speed required, whether it's going uphill, downhill, or on flat roads. Quick Shifter Now, let's get back to discussing clutchless shifting and quick shifter. Clutchless shifting is a technique used to maximize the performance of the conventional transmission we discussed earlier. This technique works by utilizing the size difference between the dog teeth and the gaps in the freewheeling gear. The process of this shifting technique is done by pressing the shift lever halfway first to disengage the previous sliding gear. Then, the technique continues by lowering the throttle pedal to minimize the speed difference between the sliding gear, which has dog teeth, and the freewheeling gear, which has the gaps. Specifically, the speed difference between these two gears must be less than 1,000 RPM. Therefore, this technique must be performed with both speed and precision. Once the speed difference between the sliding gear and the freewheeling gear is below 1,000 RPM, the driver can continue to press the shift lever until the dog teeth on the sliding gear and the gap on the freewheeling gear lock into each other. This technique significantly helps reduce the delay during shifting compared to using the clutch lever. Now, with the working principle of this clutchless shifting technique, Engineers have developed it into a technology we now know as the Quick Shifter. The Quick Shifter is a device that functions almost the same as clutchless shifting. The Quick Shifter is positioned below the shift lever and directly connected to it. When the shift lever is moved, it will activate a rod connected to a sensor in the Quick Shifter unit. This sensor sends a signal to the ECU, which is already integrated with Quick Shifter technology. For ECUs that are not yet integrated with quick shifters, additional devices are needed. If we apply an aftermarket quick shifter, we will receive an additional module that is placed between the quick shifter sensor and the ECU unit. The signal sent from the quick shifter sensor is processed in the ECU and instructs the ECU to stop the ignition process, meaning the coil will stop working. This halted ignition process will effectively reduce engine speed until the shifting process is successfully completed. Then, once the shifting is finished and the rider releases pressure on the shift lever, the signal sent from the sensor to the ECU and the coil will be stopped. So that's roughly how the quick shifter works. As usual, if any of you have questions, don't hesitate to write them in the comment section below. If you have any feedback or suggestions, feel free to write them in the comment section as well. If you found this video useful and enjoyed our content today, don't forget to press the like button and share the video with your friends. Also, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any notifications every time we upload a new video. See you in the next video, and thanks for watching.